Warning. I'm going to swear a lot about a game that has swearing in it, whose players constantly swear and fucking type swear words. If you don't like swearing, fuck off and watch something else, you bitch. Dota 2 is free. It is the only game that I hold in the same category as Super Smash Brothers. Therefore, I'm going to take a really fucking hard look at it with you all. The only things that Dota cost money are cosmetic items that change the appearance of the 105 characters. To put that into perspective, Smash has 36 characters, some of which are clones of each other. Each of the 105 characters in Dota 2 are unique and are unlocked the moment you finish the fucking tutorial. You don't have to pay a goddamn dime, so if you've got a PC that can watch this fucking YouTube video, or a laptop, or even a fucking Mac, you can check this shit out. You'll need to get a Steam account, but it's free, so just fucking do it! In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to play a basic game of Dota 2. Dota 2 is the most complicated fucking game that I've ever seen. It takes a very fucking long time to understand it all. I'm here to shorten that time into a few hours for you. You're welcome, bitch. Dota is an acronym that stands for Defense of the Ancient. This right here is the Ancient. There are two of them, so there's another one right over here in the fucking other side of the map. We'll get to that later. In this game, you'll join a team of five heroes who will fight against five other heroes. These people are going to be controlled by real people, and you can kick their ass, which is a good fucking thing. The first team to destroy the enemy team's Ancient is going to win the game. Each game that you play, you'll get a fresh start, and your hero will begin at level 1 with 625 to 825 gold. You get more starting money if you let the computer choose your hero at random than you do if you choose your own hero. So keep that in mind if you want more fucking money. But unless you know which every one of these fucking heroes are, you end up fucked over if you get random different hero that you don't know. So keep that in mind too. This is the Dota 2 map. Learn it well because this is the only fucking map you're ever going to play on in Dota 2. There's a lot of shit I'm going to go over, so feel free to play the motherfucking video over again so that you can learn all these fucking locations. In the southwestern corner of the map, the Radiant have their base, and in the northeastern corner of the map, the Dire make their fucking base. So these two are fighting each other, obviously. One's supposed to be good, and one's supposed to be evil. In each corner, there's a base, and at the very corner, the fountain exists with a general shop inside of it. The fountain also has a Gatling gun that will rape enemy heroes that come in there. This is the fucking Ancient. The name of the motherfucking game is Defense of the Ancient. So you better fucking know where this thing is, and don't let the enemy kill it. If the enemy get this motherfucking thing, it's over. You lose, and you suck balls. On each road, there are both a ranged and melee barracks, totaling six barracks that spawn creeps, each of which is protected by a fucking tower. Your Ancient is also protected by two towers. In between these towers, barracks, and the Ancient are shitty buildings that give the enemy money for no reason. They serve no purpose other than to fucking buffer the creeps between your important buildings. This is the Radiant Jungle. In here, there's fucking enemies that won't attack you unless you attack them first. Some of them are easy, some of them are kinda hard, and some of them are really hard. There's also a group of creeps called the Ancients, which you don't have to defend. I don't know why they named them fucking Ancients, but they did, so just learn that shit. There are six towers between you and the enemy base. Each one of these is located on a road. These roads are called lanes. The closest to the bottom is called the bottom lane. The closest to the middle of the screen is called the mid. And the closest to the top of the screen is called the top lane. This works for both fucking sides of the map, as I'll show you. The Dire Jungle is equally outfitted with camps of creeps, but they're located in different places. It's not a symmetrical map, so it's important to note each of these locations individually. The Dire Lanes are also named based on their position of the map, so the Radiant Top Lane is the same as the Dire Top Lane.
in the northwestern and southeastern corners of the map, there's a shop that you can go to with a limited amount of items. It's really easy to shop there because it's right where you fight in the beginning of the game. It's called the side shop. And in these locations, there's a shop that sells special items you can't buy anywhere else called the secret shop. It ain't a secret anymore because I fucking told you about it. This is where Roshan has his fucking cave, and I'll show you Roshan later. He's a big fat fuck, and he gives you some money and some protection if you can kill him. In the river, there are two rune spawn points. There's one right here, and there's one over here in this spot. Every two minutes, a rune will appear in one of these two places. There are five kinds of runes. Invisibility, illusion, double damage, haste, and regeneration. Your hero can pick one of these fucking runes up. Invisibility, obviously, makes you invisible to the enemy team. Your allies will be able to see you. Illusion creates two mirror images of your hero, plus your actual hero itself. Total of three fucking images of your hero. You will be able to see which ones are illusions, but the enemies will not be able to tell the difference between the illusion heroes and you, except for the fucking illusions are going to take more damage than you. So if they shoot the illusion, illusion and it like, takes an obscene amount of damage, they will figure out that it's not you. Double damage makes double your hero damage. do double damage, obviously. Haste makes you run like a bitch. Haste. And regeneration instantly cures your health and mana. Well, it's not instant, but it's really fucking fast. So... Uh, if you do collect one of these things, make sure you don't get hit before you get your mana and your fucking health cured, or it doesn't do dick for you. The rune type that appears is always fucking random, and you can watch the timer to know when they will come. There's also a giant fat fuck called Rashan in this cave in the river. There he is. Suck my dick, bitch. Yeah, well, fuck you too, I don't give a shit. Rashan is difficult to kill in the beginning of each game, but will give everyone on the team 200 gold and drop a 6 minute 1 up called the Aggies of the Immortal if you manage to kill him. Let's try to kill him at level 1 and see how it goes. There he is, taking some damage. Oh, that's not good. He thought about not fucking dealing with it anymore. Oh, Suck my dick, bitch. It's not good. Going against Roshan at level 1 is like going against a tower at level 1. It's pretty fucking dumb. So don't do it. This is the Dota 2 tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll learn how important it is to stun creeps before you kill them. So this is the first fucking part of the tutorial that's actually fucking wrong. Here we have Dragon Knight at level 2, but he's getting his first ability at level 2. It's not how it fucking works, by the way, if you give a shit. It's actually coming in at level 1 with your first ability, and you'll get your second ability at level 2. So they're teaching you wrong from the motherfucking beginning. So note this, and when you play this piece of shit, don't fucking think that your first ability comes at level 2. Get it right away. Obviously, they make you choose one, too. You actually get to choose between three fucking abilities so you can give yourself stats. Suck that shit. Here they are. More fucking talking creeps. God damn, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Can't go that way. Or this way. So there's no way you're gonna find the motherfucking keeper of the light. You're just gonna have to fucking keep killing these bitches. Until you get enough fucking gold. Oh, nope, actually I was supposed to go that way. Just wouldn't let me do it until I went the wrong way. That's the way good tutorials work. There's the fucking Keeper of the Light. Here it is. They're fucking telling me I've got to use the Dragon Tail. A stun attack on the fucking creeps. Don't even have enough mana to use it, yet they're demanding I do so. That fucking Keeper of the Light won't give me mana, even though his mana is fucking full and his cooldown is gone. So, whoever the fuck programmed this does not know what the fuck they were doing. Look at this shit. I can't even satisfy their ass. There. Stunned creep. Do not do this in the fucking game. That is stupid as hell.
Look at this shit. It's already been 11 minutes. I've learned nothing. You will learn nothing. And it's required before you are allowed to play the actual game. I know three people, personally, who put this fucking game down and never looked at it again because this fucking tutorial was so goddamn lame. One of the reasons that I'm making this fucking guide is that people will realize that it is worth going through this shitty tutorial to play the rest of the game. Play through it one fucking time and never look back at it. There are more fucking tutorials, but you only have to defeat the first fucking tutorial to actually be able to play the game. So I recommend you stop right here. But if you want to go through the other fucking tutorials, probably only take a little bit of your time. But they'll probably teach you the wrong shit, just like they did in the first fucking tutorial. So don't fucking say I didn't warn you that they're going to teach you shit wrong, because that's what they do. You bitch. Let's go over the HUD and controls. There's a lot of information on the motherfucking screen at any given time. There's a lot of things your hero can do. First, before you play, go into the game settings, which are located right here at this fucking gear. And change your hero speech in the audio settings to events. This will stop your hero from talking all the time and annoying the fuck out of you. If you put it on all, they will talk all the motherfucking time. If you put it on off like I did because I'm making a tutorial here, they'll never talk. So I don't want them talking over me. If you want to put it on events. I don't have any opponents in this game, so I can show you the HUD without pissing everyone off. Let's go over what all this shit on the screen means. Up here... There are 10 pictures of 10 heroes who are playing in the fucking match. Obviously, I'm the only one in this match, so I'm appearing here. The Radiant Heroes appear here. And the Dire Heroes will appear in these five fucking slots here. A little green diamond will appear underneath the hero's picture if they can use their most powerful ability, which is called the ultimate ability. A countdown timer will appear here too if your hero is dead, indicating how long it's going to take for them to reappear at the fucking fountain. If your hero can use money to respawn after death, some coins will also appear under their portrait. This is called buyback, and it's expensive. The cost of buying back goes up based on your level, so it's sometimes it's a good idea to buy back, and then sometimes it's a fucking complete waste of money, and it's up to you whether or not you think you need to be right back in the game or not and spend that fucking buyback money. I'm not going to tell you when to do that, because it's not my fucking business. Right here, you can see the game time. This is really important, because certain events on the map happen at certain different time intervals. I mentioned those fucking runes before, but there are several other things that happen at exact times throughout the match. Keep an eye on this fucking game time. It also shows whether it is day or night in the game world. Right now it's day and you can see this big fucking red ass area here showing that it's day. And below here on this fucking arrow you can see this little sun icon. This area shows whether it is day or night and how long it's going to be until the next change. In the daytime your field of vision is quite good. But at night it becomes shitty as hell unless you have special night vision ability. Many heroes use the cloak of night to their fucking advantage. So be aware of the fucking cycle and you will play the game better. Now there's some icons over here. And sometimes there's even icons over here. They're not important to the gameplay really. They're used for analysis or during replays. I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out what the fuck all this shit is. But for now, I want you to ignore it. Bitch. This is the minimap. The minimap fucking rules. Use it. Watch it. Lick it. It shows the fucking enemy units that are in vision of any allied unit on your map. And it also shows the position of your four teammates. You can execute movement and ability commands on the minimap just like you can on the main screen. You can also hold down the alt key and indicate an area of the map to your teammates. Like this. Do not overuse this shit or I'll come to your house and I'll take a fucking dump on your modem. Bitch. 
This shows a close-up portrait of the game element you have selected. Right now, my hero is selected, but if I select this shitty-ass building, it will also appear in the fucking portrait area. This bar shows how much experience is required for you to level up. And this fucking orb here shows the current level of whatever element you have selected. Right now, Lena is at level 1. And as I fucking said, in the real game, at level 1, you get to choose an ability to level up. You do not have to level up to level 2 to choose a fucking ability. That tutorial is fucking wrong. So here we, here we fucking choose this fucking ability here. And if you click on that shit here, and then you click on an ability, you will level it up. You can see these fucking squares under here indicate how much power is in any given ability at any motherfucking time. This sword thing here shows how much damage your basic attacks do. If you hover over it with the mouse like this, you will get some extra details. And it will also show you your three main stats here. Strength, Agility, and Intelligence. Strength gives your hero hit points. It also adds attack damage. That hero is a strength hero. Agility gives your hero armor, attack speed, and it also adds damage. That hero is an agility hero. And finally, intelligence gives your hero mana and mana regeneration, as well as adding attack damage. That hero is an intelligence hero. As you level up, these fucking stats will become stronger, and there are also many items you could buy in the store to modify the fucking stats. This fucking shield here shows your current armor rating right now. This bitch's armor level is 1. It's not very good. Armor absorbs a portion of physical attack damage. Or basic attacks. And these fucking shoes here indicate your hero's movement rate. Heroes start with the movement rate of about 280 to 320. Depending on the hero. This actually indicates how far the fucking hero can move per second in the game's basic unit of distance which is really fucking small and you can increase this speed value again by using items or ability this bitch is fucking moving 295 units per second which is about this rate right here that you can see up here you've got your fucking hit points and your motherfucking mana points if you take damage or use mana, a little number is going to appear in the right. Let's use some mana here. And it's going to tell you the rate of regeneration for that particular element. So this is fucking mana here. It's going up at one mana per second. You can see this shit is ticking up. Now if I go take some fucking damage here. Here I'm taking some fucking damage. You can see that I'm generating 0 0.7 hit points per second as well. And this fucking rate of regeneration can be increased by abilities and items. Now up here it says level up. If you click this shit, you have the choice to level up one of your fucking skills or to increase your three basic stats by two each. So you click this shit, and you can go here to increase every stat you've got by two, or you can fucking put a level up into one of your abilities. But you can't fucking level up your same skill more than once in a row. So I can't level up this fucking fire attack right now because it's fucking unavailable. So I have to choose a different one. I'm choosing this one here. Each skill can level up four times and it'll increase in power as you do this shit. The final skill is called an ultimate ability. It's this one here. It's very powerful and it can only be leveled up after level six. 11, and 16, respectively. Except for the case of Meepo, who's a fucking weirdo, and he can get his ultimate ability at level 4, and has to wait till level 18 to get his final ultimate. But he's a fucking bitch, so don't even play that stupid-ass hero, because he sucks. It's important to note that if you cannot put all of your motherfucking level up points into the same skill without leveling up at least another skill first. This stops people from having level 4 uh, skills at level 4. So the first chance you'll actually have to level a skill to the fourth level is at level seven. Right now I can upgrade any of these fucking skills because I'm at level three, but I only have level one in both of them, so I can bring something to level two. Over here you have your inventory. 
It can hold up to six items in this bitch. There's so many items in this game, it's ridiculous. Check out the fucking item guide that I made if you want help with how many fucking items are in here. You could drop a fucking item onto the ground by left clicking the bitch and dragging it out of the inventory and letting it go where you want it to be dropped. I just drop these fucking branches right here on the ground. You can pick it back up just by right clicking it. There it is, it's right back in my fucking inventory. If you don't have space in this bitch, you can't pick the item off the ground, so make sure you've got space in there if you want to be picking shit up. If you're near one of these fucking stores, you can also sell the item for half of its value by right clicking it and selecting sell. Just like this. You can also disassemble certain items into their component parts by using this menu. Here we have the option to disassemble and boom. All of the parts that it takes to make that fucking item are now on the ground. You can pick them up individually. If you pick up all three of the fucking items, it will automatically change back into the fully assembled items. So be careful if you're trying to disassemble something to make something else to pick them up in the right fucking order. The hotkeys associated with each ability or item are shown in the respective square. So right now I have this particular item hotkeyed to space. Normally... I believe that the items are hotkeyed to the lower part of the keyboard from Z to N. So you're going to have to change your fucking hotkeys if you want them to be customized. And I encourage you to do this shit and make it fucking comfortable for you which fucking hotkey is in each of these fucking item slots. This section of the screen deals with the shop and your motherfucking money. This shows how much money you have. 400 and nine dollars and you can buy basic items anytime by clicking the shop button and then selecting an item you want to buy by right clicking it so if I wanted to buy this piece of shit I could just right click on it if I don't want any money fucking buy this one if I wanted to buy this piece of shit I can just fucking right click on it and I will buy it if you're near the shop the item will be put in your inventory directly but if you're not near the shop it'll be stored at the fountain in what is called the stash. You can see it right here. You'll have to click this fucking button to grab it. There it is. Now it's in my stash. If you're near the shopkeeper when you buy something, it'll go directly in your inventory. Just like this one did. You can pick up the fucking item from your stash when you return to the fucking base, or you can have this fucking donkey carry the item for you. Use the fucking F3 key to command the fucking donkey to bring your items in your stash to you. Over here you can see some information about the fucking donkey. Only one person can use the fucking donkey at a time. If someone else is using the fucking donkey, a picture of their face is going to appear in this square here. If someone's using the fucking donkey, wait your motherfucking turn. This game allows you to be an asshole and take control of the motherfucking donkey when someone else is using it. If you do that, people are going to get pissed the fuck off. Fair warning, always look in this spot here for some hero's fucking face. If that fucking face is in there, don't be pushing F3 or you're going to get bitched at. This fucking donkey is a weak piece of shit. He's got 75 fucking hit points. If he dies, the enemy team gets $1,000, and whatever items you have become inaccessible for 2.5 minutes. If fucking donkey dies under your control, everyone will hate you. Be careful, and they'll know it's you too, because it's going to have your fucking items in it after you fucking send it to his death. So don't fucking do it. Be careful with this fucking donkey. He's your fucking animal friend. Isn't he cute? Take a look at this fucking donkey. What a piece of shit. Let's look at this fucking shop. When you're playing the game, don't spend a lot of fucking time in the shop. Each second you spend look at these fucking items in the fucking shop is a second that you're losing the game. Know what you want to buy before you shop in the motherfucking shop. I suggest you view the item guide that I made before you play your fucking first game. There are more than a hundred different items in this fucking shop, and each one does something very different than the next one. At the first time you go to this fucking shop, it's going to look like this. This is what it looks like on the default settings. And it's very hard to find shit in this fucking way. So you should click this button here. 
to organize all the fucking items on a two easily navigable screens. Here are the non-component items, which do not require any parts to make them. They can just be purchased as is. And then here are all the items that you need multiple parts to purchase. If you shift click one of these fucking complex items, the required components will appear here in this fucking spot. Let's try this one. There it is. Now you will see all the little fucking things you'll need in order to make this final fucking item, which is the Aghanim Scepter, named after that fucking dude in uh, Zelda. You can buy these fucking parts directly from this screen. You can always know that you can right click this shit and it will purchase it if you've got enough money. You'll also get a fucking reminder sound when you can afford one of the items that you put in this little spot on this part of the screen. So it's convenient, I must say. If you know the item you want, you can't find it in this fucking list because it's so fucking extremely huge. You can type its name up here in this little search thing. It'll come up faster than a Google search. So let's find the pipe of insight. There it is. It comes up faster than a Google search. So if you know what you want, you know the name of the motherfucking thing, you can't find it in the fucking hundred and God knows how many items are here in this fucking shop, just search for the motherfucking thing here and it will appear for you. Eventually you're going to know where all these fucking items are and you'll be able to spend the time you save winning the fucking game. Spending more than ten seconds in the motherfucking shop shopping in one go is going to get you killed. Guaranteed. You'll be dead as hell, so be careful. Each hero is stronger with different fucking items, and there's no wrong way to shop, but many people have created builds that offer plans of which items should be purchased for which heroes. Right here is a default build for this particular hero. This is the shittiest build I've ever seen. Who the fuck buys these things, seriously? Ugh, anyway, Steam has different Fina, is what it's called. What the hell is this shitty build? Anyway, Steam has a default build for each hero, and it automatically changes for each one, and you can use this default build if you want, and just select the items from this fucking side thing. There's that fucking reminder that this is now a purchasable item here, this wizard staff, and I can buy it right here from the screen. I never use these fucking default builds. Obviously, I even have a problem with some of them. This particular build involves building a very fucking extremely strength-oriented item for an intelligence hero, and I don't agree with it. But it can be a useful tool for new players who don't want to spend their whole motherfucking time looking at what the items do in the shop. You start at the top, and you click each one as you go, and you should be able to make your way through the motherfucking things. It's up to you whether or not you want to use these fucking recommended builds. I don't want to fucking see them. So now that you know the object of the game, and you know the HUD, it's time to fucking talk about the controls. If you ever don't know where your fucking hero is and you're out there in the middle of a fucking dark ass map, just hit F1 and it will come back to your hero and center the hero on the motherfucking screen. If you right click on either a movable place on the screen or anywhere on the fucking mini map, you will move in the shortest possible route to that fucking location. Now be careful when you click on faraway spots because the shortest route to that fucking spot might not be the fucking safest route. If you right click on an enemy unit, your hero will use its basic attack on the enemy. Some heroes are melee heroes and need to be close to the fucking enemy to attack and some are ranged heroes who can attack from a distance. Your heroes will continue to attack the enemy until it dies or until you give the hero another command. So once you fucking clicked on one of these motherfuckers, it's going to keep attacking shit until everything around it is dead. Be aware of that. If you use any other command, it will stop attacking the fucking enemy. To use your targetable abilities, either press the associated hotkey, which in this case is Q, or click the ability button with your mouse and then left click the target to activate the ability. You can change the settings so that double clicking or double hitting the cot key for certain abilities will cast them on yourself. And I prefer this, so go into the settings and change that if you fucking want to do it. Now remember, your 
left clicking to activate your target abilities and you right click to do basic attacks and to move. It's a fucking simple thing, but it's easy to mix up the right click for regular attacks. You'll click one of these fucking abilities and then you'll right click and nothing will happen because right clicking is for fucking basic attacks. So be ready for that shit. Some abilities are passive, like this fucking one here, and they do not require activation. The ability will constantly be happening and it doesn't cost any mana. There are more than 430 unique hero abilities in Dota. Look at my motherfucking top 22 abilities video so that you can know what fucking abilities of other heroes you need to know in order to not get the shit kicked out of you. These abilities require special knowledge and if you don't know these 22, you're gonna get fucking reamed. So see that shit before you play your first game. If one of your units is below 50% health, or if one of your fucking towers is below 10% health, you could deny it by hitting the A key. This little fucking arrow will appear, and you'll be able to force attack it. If an explanation point appears above the hero, you will deny the enemy a chance to get experience and gold from the unit. It'll also frustrate the fuck out of the enemy, because they want that experience, trust me. As you become an intermediate player, you're going to learn how to effectively deny these fucking enemies from experience and gold in many ways. You can also use the S key to stop yourself from attacking or moving. I don't use this shit much, but it can be a useful tool for some people. So if you don't want to be attacking or moving, you can just hit S and that shit will just stop. Using active items works in the same ways that abilities do. Just hit the respective hotkey and then fucking target and left click for a target ability. The controls in Dota 2 are very similar to those in Warcraft or Diablo, and they're about the only part of Dota that isn't complicated at all. Dota originally came from a mod of Warcraft 3, so it's really easy to see why these controls are so fucking similar to these Blizzard games. Some heroes and items can summon units. Summoned units must be selected to be controlled. This is quite difficult to do for new players. You can drag the mouse like this to select multiple units and control them as a group. You can then move and attack as a team. But the problem with this is you cannot use summoned units individual abilities in this way. You have to click on the individual unit to see their portrait and any abilities that they may have and use their abilities as you would a normal hero. While you're controlling a unit as a single individual unit, the other units that you were controlling before will just sit there like fucking idiots and wait to get killed. So be careful. It leaves them easy targets. Alright, in order to win, you're going to need to get some fucking money and some fucking experience. How do you do that? You have to do it by killing enemy units and heroes. Take a look at this fucking experience bar here. If any enemy dies around you from any other thing for any reason at all, you will get experience for them. So as you can see, I just got fucking experience from standing here doing dick and these fucking creeps are just getting me experience. I'm going to be at level 2 before you know it. It's as simple as that. You can just sit here and jack it if you want and you will get experience. Gold on the other hand is more difficult to get. You will get gold if you land the killing blow or last hit on a fucking enemy unit, hero, tower, or building. And you will also get assist gold if you assist in the killing of a hero and are nearby the motherfucker. Alright, so let's get a fucking last hit here. This one here looks ripe for the picking. There. And you see, I just got $42 for fucking getting this last hit from the motherfucker. If you get that last hit, you get the money. But you don't get dick if you don't try to get the last hit on fucking enemies. You're also going to get gold magically over time. As you can see, you're getting some sort of salary here from the shopkeeper because you're his mercenary or whatever. If you die, you will lose some money and the enemy will get money. So do not die. It is the worst fucking thing that could possibly happen. These little bastards here are creeps. They are your mindless army of killing machines. Respect them. They're dying for you. They come out of your barracks every 30 seconds or so, and they also come out of the enemy barracks. And they meet somewhere in the middle to fight an infinite battle that will never end without the help of heroes. 
Now, heroes take this equilibrium, and they fucking upset the balance by killing them in the lane for money and experience. When the fucking hero kills the enemy creeps enough, the ally creeps will eventually reach the enemy tower here and attack it. And that is referred to by many people as pushing. I'm about to take tower damage here. It's a shitty thing to do. But anyway, here these creeps are fucking the tower up. And while the creeps are fucking up the tower, you are protected from getting hit by the fucking tower. So that's how you can actually do damage to the tower if you give a shit. While you're pushing the lane, the hero should try to land the killing blow on as many fucking creeps as it can to get the money. Enemy heroes are going to make this difficult because they have the exact same fucking goal. I made an entirely different guide to laning effectively, so you should watch the goddamn thing. You're not going to regret it. But for now, I ain't going to tell you how to do that. After a while, your team is going to group up and try to attack the enemy heroes and structures as a group. And that is called team fighting. When you see that happen, please join them. They do need you, even if you suck balls. Now you can play this fucking game and lose horribly at it. At least you're going to know what the fuck is going on. If you want to be able to win, you're also going to have to know the information in the other following guides that I list here. First and foremost, my guide on how not to die. Watch this shit or you're going to be dead. You're going to be dead anyway. You're going to die so many fucking times. And when you hear that fucking respawn song that they sing when you die, you're fucking wish... You fucking never been born. You should view my tower guide. My item guide. The top 22 abilities you should know to not get the shit kicked out of you guide. The guide to laning effectively. And my guide on how not to be a dickhole in public games. The other guides are not that important. But these ones are essential. If you want to win the motherfucking games that you play, better watch the motherfuckers. Bitch. Dota is a fucking extremely complicated game. It is on a learning curve of actually learning another fucking language. It's weird as fuck, but it rules and it's free as hell. So give it a try. It doesn't gotta hurt you to fucking get the game and look at it. Because it doesn't cost you shit. Most people want you to pay fucking money for a game and it isn't even this good. So take that with a fucking grain. Go out there and get the shit for free. You bitch.